Hello and welcome to this Formlabs webinar. This is a shortened version of the original broadcast. If you'd like to view the content in full, please click on the link below. Awesome. Um, so yeah, thanks everyone for being here. Uh, I'm assuming a lot of people on this call, on this on this session, have a pretty good understanding of who Formlabs is and what we do. So I'll keep my section relatively quick, but there may be folks here who are unfamiliar with the technology. Um, and also the way the technology works is relevant later to um, coatings and post-processing. So it's a good thing to cover on a session like this, even if it's just briefly. Uh, let me just make sure got everything out of the way. There we go. Um, so yeah, we're Formlabs. We're a 3D printer company based out of Boston, Massachusetts. We've been around for a little over 10 years now, which is crazy. Uh, we have two main technologies that we work in, um, SLA and SLS. Um, you can see here on this slide, we've got sort of the breakdown of all the products currently within these, these buckets. So uh, SLA stands for stereolithography. Um, that includes our Form 3, Form 3D, and Form 3L lines, uh, as well as the wash and cure for both of those machines. Um, and then we've got the, uh, the Fuse 1 SLS machine, as well as the Fuse Sift, which is the post-processing for that machine. And we'll get into a little more detail here on that. So on the Form 3 and the 3L, the technology used between them is, is exactly the same. Um, they use a technology called low force stereolithography. So um, on previous Formlabs printers, uh, you you would get a, uh, here, I'll go on to the next slide here so we can see an example. You'd have, this is actually a diagram from our, our old machine where you'd have uh, lasers shooting up from below uh, into the bottom of a tank with a build platform nestled down in it. The laser shoots up from below, cures a thin layer of resin between the bottom of the tank and the build platform. And then the entire uh, tray holding the resin and, and yeah, would, would shift sideways um, to break the part free from the bottom of the tank and it could go up and do another layer. Um, we found that this introduced an enormous amount of stress force into the part during the printing process, which um, increases the odds of a print failure, reduces uh, detail, all kinds of negative effects. So with the Form 3 Plus, with low force stereolithography, the idea is that um, the bottom of the tank is now flexible uh, and there's a small roller uh, on the on the laser unit, uh, and that roller essentially peels as it's moving across the build volume. Um, this creeps the peel forces much more spread out during the printing process rather than yanking on the part at the end of each layer. Um, that allows us to produce way more uh, detailed and consistent parts. Um, the SLA product workflow is pretty simple. You have to produce a 3D file. Our software can take any OBJ or S, uh, STL, um, and it turns into what's, what's called a .form file. We're using our proprietary preform software, um, which if anyone on this call doesn't currently have, you're more than welcome to download it. It's totally free. You don't need to own a Formless product to check it out. Um, so yeah, produce the file, prepare the model in preform. That means um, orienting it, supporting it, all that sort of stuff, which the software does automatically. That being said, um, if at a certain point you're comfortable enough to determine those things on your own, we encourage that as well. Um, we always recommend starting with the, the kind of automatic recommendations. Um, from there, you print your model using the printer. And then uh, our main focus of today is post-processing, not washing, but also but the stuff that comes after washing. So um, coatings, paintings, things like that comes at the very end. So that's SLA. Moving on now to SLS, we've got selective laser sintering, which uses quite a similar technology, but instead of uh, solidifying a liquid resin into a solid uh, plastic using a laser, this uh, solidifies a powdered nylon into a solid uh, plastic using uh, a laser. Um, so as you can see, unlike uh, the SLA, this laser comes down from above and hits a thinly distributed layer of powder um, on each uh, layer of, of the print. Um, you can see here on the right side of this slide is a, uh, every fuse has a camera in it that's pointed at the, the build layer. So you can actually see the laser working and doing each laser so, uh, layer. So this is what you're seeing here is a cross section of one layer uh, being, being done in the fuse, which is really cool. Um, so yeah, this is the fuse. You can see the sort of hopper looking thing at the bottom there is where the print is kept it builds from the top and lowers down as you go. Um, just some quick kind of bullet points about the fuse because it's still kind of new and it will be our predominant focus today. Um, it's a really strong output system. It, it, you can recycle a lot of the material from each print up to 70% between prints. Um, because uh, any part of the print that isn't being lasered is still just powder, the parts are all self-supporting. So you can print outrageously complicated um, 
parts without needing any support material whatsoever because anything that's not being lasered is all is just being supported by the powder around it which is really cool um the part quality is really really high it's an amazing finish i'm actually holding a little chain mail piece now because i like to fiddle with something in my hands while i'm talking uh, but yeah you can see it's a really cool flexible chain mail and this is all printed in one uh in one go which is really neat uh, and then lastly, we have the fuse SIF. This is the post-processing solution for uh, the, the fuse. So this is um, a negative pressure chamber where you have a vacuum hooked up to it. Um, and uh, it's constantly pulling the powder back into itself. So you can clean your parts a bit like an excavation dig uh, after each print and then recycle uh, a high proportion of the powder for your next print. A uh, quick overview of our materials. We've got nylon 12, uh, nylon 11, and then I don't have slides for these, but we have nylon uh, glass infused and nylon carbon fiber infused. Um, if you want any more information on these materials, I, I encourage you to just visit our website and check it out. There's a ton of good information about those materials there um, if you're unfamiliar or want to learn more. Uh, and with that, that's my overview. So I will now pass it over to Tim. Tim, take it away. Dan, thank you very much. Everybody, thank you for being here today. Um, I am Tim O'Malley. I am the Industrial Account Manager for Cerakote Ceramic Coatings, and today we're going to talk a little bit about um, Cerakoting uh, Form Labs 3D printed parts. So, um, yeah, let's get started. So, uh, NIC Industries is our parent company. Uh, we have three main divisions, uh, Cerakote being one. Uh, performance Materials is our other in the polymer section, and then Prismatic Powder Coatings as well. So we we sell under all three brands. We, we started in 1984 um, selling high temp coatings to the automotive industry, um, and we are the industry leading manufacturer of thin film liquid ceramic coatings and polymers. Um, we have about 170 employees, and we do all of our R&D, manufacturing, distribution, uh, all right here in Southern Oregon, so uh, all made here in the U.S. So first question I get from just about everybody is, what is Cerakote? Um, so Cerakote is a thin film liquid ceramic coating. So it's it's essentially applied like a paint, um, but being thin film, um, you know, we're not, it's a, it, it's a tight tolerance type of application, a thin film build. So not changing any kind of dimensional um, aspects of the part that you're printing or, or coating. Um, you know, it's direct to substrate. There's no primers. There's no top coats needed. A uh, single layer, and again, it's it's applied like paint. So it's utilizing an HVLP spray gun system. Um, that is how you apply Cerakote. And for all of our uh, our U.S. based folks, uh, we are VOC um, compliant in the United States, uh, Prop 65 compliant. And for all of our friends over in Europe, we are Reach and ROHS compliant. So uh, very, it's a it's a very great, very safe uh, coating system. Um, environmental. So, you know, Cerakote is a very environmentally friendly coating. Um, again, we are, uh, you know, we distribute and ship to just about every major country. Um, and in comparison to some of the industry's uh, current processes like plating or paintings, um, or even some of the dyeing out there, um, you know, we're not utilizing any kind of acids or, or heavy metals or organic dyes that can cause, you know, things like skin irritation, um, toxicities, um, and they're kind of harder to dispose of. But, um, we know, we don't use conflict minerals or heavy metals. Um, you know, we are a solvent-based coating, but a lot of the pigments that we do utilize are very safe. Um, and in our polymer production itself, um, we actually, we actually recycle about 99% of the byproduct that comes off of uh, the polymer production. So, um, you know, we, we have a very sustainable manufacturing process as well. We're really proud of that here in the state of Oregon. And so what industries do we serve? So a lot of these might actually look very similar to some of the industries you serve as well at your business. Um, additive manufacturing is an obvious one with 3D printing, um, aerospace, automotive defense, uh, consumer electronics, oil and gas customers, renewable energy, uh, customers as well, um, general industrial and medical devices. So um, our coatings can be applied to a very wide variety of materials, a very wide variety of applications. So, um, you know, the rule of thumb is that we, what, what we typically say is that, you know, it's just, uh, it's not necessarily coating, but just your imagination. So, um, you know, whatever you can think of putting Cerakote on, you can pretty much apply it to. And so we'll just kind of cover the uh, Cerakote product line. Uh, we're going to cover four main uh, coating series today. 
if you just hit, there you go. Yeah, so we're going to cover H series, our Elite series, C series, and MC series, and I'll kind of break that down. But these are the, the four primary series that we see on 3D printed parts. So um, and we'll start with H series. So this is our flagship series of coatings. This has um, the most colors that we offer as far as uh, color uh, variety goes and finishes. Um, it is by far the most popular for SLS and SLA customers. So um, somebody who's looking for, you know, that, in, in, you know, additional durability, the chemical resistance, um, really that end use part type of finish, trying to get it from that um, 3D printed state uh, where it's post-process, you know, you might have removed supports or you've depowdered it with your SIFT um, and trying to really bring it to a completely finished part where you want something that is either bright and vibrant or metallic. Um, H series is perfect for that. So, uh, like I said, a majority of our uh, Fuse and Form 3 customers are utilizing H series for their applications. So, Elite Series is really tailored for the industrial end use parts. So, something that's going to see a little bit more wear and tear, um, a little bit more. Uh, harsher environments, so to speak. So, you know, something in industrial processing and arm tooling, um, something that's going to just see, you know, higher chemical environments where they might be exposed to like strong acids or um, more intense solvents or fuels. Uh, Elite Series is, is perfect for that. And this is by far our most robust coating that we uh, manufacture for uh, metal and polymers. So getting into um, C-Series, this is a really unique one for uh, SLA users as well. Um, C-Series is excellent for that uh, long-term outdoor use because it is a completely 100% UV stable coating system. So somebody using you know, any kind of SLA resin, uh, this is the coating you would wanna use if you're gonna have a part that's gonna live outside. Um, this is also a part of our high temperature line. So um, somebody who's looking to deflect radiant heat, somebody who's trying to get their material to be a little bit more stable at higher temperatures. Uh, the C-Series is an excellent coating system um, for these types of materials. And again, for those using SLA, uh, not the fused parts, but SLA for you know the photopolymers, uh, C-Series is the best way to go. And last but not least, our MC clear coats. So our clear coats have a few unique properties to them. One, they are, again, very 100% UV stable. They will not yellow or fade in, or degrade in, in UV. Um, but one unique characteristic that makes it, uh, that makes it ideal for uh, injection molded tooling and molds. So if you're doing SLA or SLS molding, uh, the MC series clear coats actually act as a, as a, a release agent or a non-stick coating for those surfaces. So if you are making like, you know, low to medium size uh, volume molds with, with a Form Labs printer, this is an excellent coating to utilize for that type of application where you're trying to get more shots out of that mold, you're trying to make it last longer. Um, this is quite ideal for that because of the nonstick properties, that chemical resistant that, that it's known for. A lot of stuff doesn't like to build or stick to it. So, uh, and being that it's probably one of our thinnest coatings, you're not gonna have any dimensional changes to the part when you go to, uh, you know, kind of make shots with it. So it's, it's excellent for, for your nonstick type of applications. Thank you for tuning in to this webinar preview from Formlabs. To view the content in full, please click on the link below. Alternatively, if you'd like to get more information on our products and services, then please visit our website.